Uh, is the U.S. going to assert itself in Latin America? Yes, it's been doing a little bit. It's not going to get too far with that, actually, I don't think. But, I mean, uh, 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 the Obama administration is under some internal pressure to be a bit more assertive in Latin America, but it can't get very far, I don't think, even with con the relatively few conservative governments. What's happening is that the Republicans want uh, a renewed pressure, and the Latin American right, particularly in Central America, is uh, uh, chomping at the bit uh, to repeat the Honduras uh, thing. But the fact is, uh, how should I say, they're counter pressures. Brazil now is a major counter pressure and shouldn't be underestimated in terms of its ability to, to hold uh, these U.S. gestures back. So I'm not sure that the U.S. is going to get very far now in reasserting itself in Latin America. Indeed, its major problem is what's going to happen in Mexico. I mean, Mexico is in a very bad situation uh, internally and economically, politically, and, and so forth and so on. And one of the consequences of that is the Mexicans are geopolitically moving to the left. Uh, they're, they're, even with this conservative government in power uh, in, uh, uh, in Mexico. So I'm, you know, the Assistant Secretary of State for Latin American Affairs is, is Valenzuela, who is uh, of Latin American descent, speaks fluent Spanish and so forth and so on and is a, a kind of Obama man and a, a moderate blah, 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 etc. But uh, uh, so he goes around trying to uh, appease uh, uh, various Latin American complainers. But I'm not impressed that that will impress in any significant degree the Latin American governments. I think Latin America is now uh, quite united in a kind of new assertion of autonomy uh, to the dismay of the real right within Latin American countries. But even in a country like Chile, which has just elected its first uh, right of center uh, president for the last 20 years, whatever number of years, um, they're not going to move significantly further along uh, pro-U.S. lines. And uh, so I'm not impressed with the, with the new thrust in Latin America. In fact, Latin America worldwide is indeed one of the lively areas politically. And it's lively because it's, it's got this new sense of collective autonomy. Mexico uh, has a kind of geopolitical deal with the United States, which hasn't worked out. They went into NAFTA, and they were supposed to get a certain number of things as a result of this uh, for their economy. Uh, because of pressures within the United States, they're not getting it. Like, take the very simple thing of whether their trucks uh, can actually uh, proceed beyond the border, and they were supposed to proceed beyond the border after X number of years, which I think ran out a year ago or so. And of course, because of what's going on politically within the United States, the U.S. has said, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. So that's disappointing. Uh, the, uh, they were supposed to get, they were even promised by, by George W. Bush that they would get something on uh, immigration uh, and so forth. Well, politically, uh, it's going to be very hard to get it through, through, through Congress. Uh, Obama seems to be wanting to try again because he's got his problems with Hispanic voters and he's got to do something, but whether he can get it through Congress is unclear. And from the Mexican point of view, they're really saying, you know, uh, where's our deal? 
Um, so uh, that's on the one hand. And as a result, you, you've got uh, you've got all these mafiosi groups who are, you know, they're wrong. <laughs> they're, they're pretty good. Uh, they're they're really creating a lot of trouble <clears throat> for for the for the Mexican government. Uh, so it's a very uh, un, unsafe situation uh, in Mexico. Um, and uh, now Mexico has the, in a sense, the same problem that I was discussing about other countries in the world. The response of people is not necessarily to say, well, we should now vote for the PRD or some other party which is left of center because maybe all the parties are corrupt, maybe all the parties are terrible. So it's a sort of very anti-government uh, response. What the popular movements will then want or do uh, is, is not clear. I mean, the Zapatistas uh, two years ago or so tried this idea of, uh, what did they call it? Um, uh, I forget the, the, the slogan, but they were going to organize um, across Mexico a uh, uh, joining together of popular movements. They, they didn't get too far uh, in uniting across uh, other areas. So we've got sort of local popular movements all over the place. Um, and I, I think what you're going to see are little uprisings in Oaxaca here and uh, so something in Baja California there and whatever, you know. Uh, and where that ends very unclear to me. Uh, but I don't think from the U.S. point of view, wherever it ends is bad news. Because if, 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 if Mexico sort of collapses politically in some sense, that's right on the frontier. Uh, and, you know, it just puts in increased pressure, first of all, for people just to come as migrants for, for now reasons of personal security leave aside economics. There might be people just trying to get across the border because it's safer in Texas than it is in, uh, in wherever. Um, and uh, so uh, in, in a sense, the U.S. looks on Mexico today the way the Chinese look on North Korea. The Chinese worry about North Korea primarily. If that government collapses, there's going to be a stream of refugees coming across the border into China, and God knows what that means for China and disruption and money and so forth. So we want to hold that government together for no other reason than our internal needs, right? And I think the U.S., but what can the U.S., it's easier for China to hold North Korea together, so to speak, than it is for the U.S. to hold Mexico. Uh, together.